Good morning. Monday morning. It's Jeff Lindsay, senior pastor at Colonial Church. I'm glad that you could join us. You know, these Monday mornings has been great for us to just take a deep breath, pause a little bit, and think about the week ahead. And to remember the weeks past. And boy, have we had weeks that have gone by that have been filled with so much. Grateful that God promises to be with us through it all. Aren't you? You know, we just got done handing out dilly bars and passing them out to members and neighbors as they came through, just as a chance to see people and to, to show them some appreciation and just to see their faces and, and love on them a bit. You know, over the next few weeks, we want to think about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is those places that we can look into our lives and see God's manifestation in such ways that we are looking more and more like Jesus. You know the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patient, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Of these things, there is no law. That's what the Scripture says in Galatians. Because there's no laws as we think about the ways that we are acting more and more like Jesus and the ways that we can see God at work in our lives. Today, I just want to think about love. Because that's one thing the world needs so much of is love. We just need to love with that, that agape style love that only God can do, but we need to strive for that where it's unconditional. We just offer it, not because of what someone does or what they've achieved or what they've produced or, or how they make us feel, but just because they're a child of God and deserve to be loved. And in sharing that love, we receive love. And man, that has the possibilities of making this world a better place. You know, uh, a number of years ago, I was the missions pastor here at Colonial Church. I had the privilege of helping to lead a partnership with World Vision. World Vision, the largest Christian relief organization in the world. And we asked the, the regional director if there was somewhere we could go, something we could do that could help make a difference. Help them start a new area. Help, us, help them focus on some area that would... Uh, help them launch a new area in the world. And so they sent us to Peru. And that started a 16-year journey where we were involved in an area called Kikihana that's made up of 16 villages. Uh, the village of Kikihana, which is the kind of the hub of that area, and then 15 other smaller, more rural communities. And we were there till we did a significant project and made some significant imprint in that community on behalf of World Vision and for the good of the community. The second year we were there, we asked the question of the World Vision staff, the Peruvians, we said, if, is there anything that us coming could help you do that you can't get done on your own? And without even thinking, they said, help us in Uzi. And we went, what's an Uzi? Well, Uzi was a remote community at about 14,000 feet in the mountains. It was remote and rural and did not have much uh, in terms of resources and didn't have much of infrastructure. And they were really trying to reach this community. And I said, whatever you need us to do. Well, it's a long story, but long story short, they literally built a road for us to get there so we could get these four-wheel drive trucks into the community. And 20 of us uh, in these trucks with the World Vision staff got to the to the community of Usi, and, and they had this big celebration for us. They were waving these homemade flags as we came. We felt so loved. We felt so welcomed. But what we didn't know is there had been some Christian missionaries that had got to that community before World Vision. And they had placed a burden on the shoulders of this small amount of people that had become followers of Jesus that their responsibility and and really, their ticket to heaven would be that they were to convert to this community, which was probably over 300 people. Well, their salvation is on the line, and so they were doing some heavy-handed recruitment to the point where everybody in the community hated these Christians. They hated the Christian church, which was this small group of people. Well, I heard about them, and I heard about how much people hated the Christians that were in this community, and I thought... Well, I certainly don't want our group to be aligned with them, but then they're Christian brothers and sisters. 
Well, much to my, uh, <laughs> much to my fear, the next day, the World Vision staff asked if I might meet with the Christian community there and offer them some support and encouragement. I heard how mean they were. I saw how they acted. I didn't want to participate. So I was pretty glad when we were eating lunch and, and thinking that maybe they had forgotten all about us meeting when the World Vision staff member came to me and said, uh, it's time to have your meeting. I remember literally praying this prayer. God, you know where my heart is. But you know what? I will take you there, but you're going to have to love them through me. And you know what? That's exactly what God did. God honored that prayer. You know, that experience and several other experiences in my life make me think about that passage in 1 John 4, 7, and 8. Because it says, Beloved, let us love one another. And then it says, For love comes from God. I often think that I've got to muster up as much love as I can so it lasts as long as it will so I can be found faithful. But that's not how it works. I'm never going to be able to muster enough love to do that which God calls me to do and to be the encouragement to the people that God places in my path. But I can be connected to the source of love. And the power of God's Spirit moving in my heart and soul, filling me to overflowing with God's love. Well, if I do that, if I'm a vessel of God's love and boundless, endless amount of God's love, well, then I truly can be a blessing. And in being a blessing to others, I'll be blessed too. Isn't that great how God works? So as we go through the next few weeks, let's think about the fruit of the Spirit and begin to look into our lives and into our hearts and into our minds and souls and say, where do we see the manifestations of God's work in our life? And then how are we using that to care for a needy world around us? Let's pray. God, thank you for these Monday morning meditations, this chance for brothers and sisters to be together, to open up your word, to think about your work in our lives, to think about the call upon our lives, and, and then to feel empowered and encouraged to face a new week with the beginning of Monday morning, knowing that, God, you've gone before us to prepare the way. We are blessed to be a blessing, and we're grateful for that. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings on your week ahead.